But my name is Nate Stemper. I'm from St. Anthony Village, Minnesota. I was born in Germany. Uh, my parents were on, uh, they met on, on a army base. My mom was a Marine, my dad was an Air Force guy, so I was born in Germany, I came over here at two. My dad was a fanatical uh, you know, person in terms of his health. He'd be running every day and uh, he was old school like calisthenics, like down in the basement doing push-ups and sit-ups and like toe reaches and, and all these like jump hangs and stuff. So I saw him doing that my whole life. I filled out a general application to the Wisconsin area schools, got accepted by uh, Eau Claire and a few other places. And I was taking mostly generals. Um, and then when my, my advisor said, why don't you check out kinesiology, you seem to be in athletics and a lot of that, the people in athletics enjoy this major. Uh, it wasn't until I declared an internship in my junior year that I got to actually participate in a gym that then I knew, okay, this is what I want to do. I think on average, you know, if you read the Bureau of Labor Statistics, like on average people like get into the, the, the training field for about three years on average. So it has a lot high rate of turnover. This will be my 10th year. So I was pretty psyched about it. I would have, I, if I, I had it in my head when I graduated that if, if I wasn't getting paid to train, I'd be on the side of a, a, you know, a highway saying, we'll train for food. Like I think if you're an authentic person to your members, the training gets better. So again, it doesn't have to be a certain way to train, but if you're training the way that's in your heart and that you perceive is the best way to train, then you're doing it right. And the first place I trained at where I got to run the, the ship was Elite One Sports Performance. I wasn't necessarily always agreeable with like the ethics of that owner, but I, I was so happy for the opportunity that I'll always be blessed to that he gave it to me. So Tom had been training baseball players, and he said, "I'm gonna, you know, I'm thinking about opening up my own baseball team." Uh, he didn't really have a name for it yet, so he he left, um, and then about four or five months, uh, I actually was laid off by the owner because we had come to so much conflict. There's just like all these ideological differences that we were getting um, abrasive with with the owner. So we both agreed, you know, let's just part ways. I was just planning on going back to training and contacted Tom and, you know, just because he was a friend. And I said, I'm back on the open market, man. You know, da, da, crazy, huh? And he said, well, why don't you come by my gym and check it out? Uh, we got a gym now. She told the truth from us. I was just going there to just see a friend and say, like, crazy, you know, because I, I didn't think he had money to support, you know, hiring me or, I didn't want to put that on him, uh, just because our friendship was first and foremost. So I came from like a pretty good outfitted gym, so equipment-wise, I was downgrading. Um, but feeling-wise, the people involved, Steve uh, McGuigan and Tom Buski, the guys who are fellow owners of this place, were such a fresh breath of air for me to, as just to be around people who are like-minded and positive and actually in this type of field for coaching for the right reasons. You know, you want your coaches to to be passionate about helping others and enjoy people, um, not worry about you know X's and O's and dollar signs. So I, I felt like they were completely walking the same path as me. So I just said, I'll do anything to be here. By the time I had came to MASH, I, I had a pretty confident set of tools that I had been sharpening. Um, but just being in a strongly encouraging, positive environment, it, it makes you want to work harder for the people around you. I just felt so much more like freedom and less burden in terms of just the work atmosphere. So we just started training together and kind of developed to where we are now. And like, I don't want to say that we're the only ones doing it the, the right way. I think anybody who takes this career field seriously has to buy into the, a couple components. One is educating yourself on what we can say is a factual part of training. The education behind it, which is what all three of our strength coaches have bought into. We've all majored uh, academically in exercise. You buy into that knowledge base and it has to be like the foundation to how you train. Otherwise, you're, you're, you're just guessing on a lot of things. You know, Mike and, and Jake uh, both train under the same philosophy of wanting to help people, but the way that we train and the way that we do things and the way that we talk to each other, uh, if you didn't know us personally, you might think that we're arguing all the time. But it, I think that helps sharpen us and makes each other accountable for the information we're giving our clients. Uh, you know, our, our motto is that we're form over function and consistency over intensity. You know, consistency is gonna trump intensity, so I'd rather have you be consistent week in, week out, month in, month out, 
year in and year out over the long run to develop your goals than to feel like you have to amp yourself up with pre-workout, scream and jump around and act uh, like you're on fire for an hour in order to be a productive workout. Any client, member, family member, however you want to quantify it, comes in and says, hey, we have this goal. That's something that's very, it's taken very seriously by our staff. But we're gonna find the least amount of work to get you those results. That's the name of the game. You wanna be as efficient as possible with your workout. So as a group, we've decided that our job is to get people results in the short term that they desire, regardless of sport, general population, adult, youth, uh, female, male, whatever it is, we're gonna get there, but our long-term goal is to show them how to live healthy, positive lives with exercise. So if you're living a, a positive and healthy way with your exercise, again, there's gonna be different goals. When you have kids and you have a full-time job and you have all these different barriers in your way, and your perception of exercise is that it doesn't make sense to do it unless you're getting shredded, or unless you're losing a ton of rate, weight, what about keeping your joints healthy? What about keeping your heart healthy? What about keeping your your mind free from from hormones that can poison your mindset. You know, there's there's all these things that exercise can benefit for you. So we have to educate them on the need. In order for anybody to do anything, you need to know why you're doing it. And if the only reason you tell somebody they have to work out is because they don't look good or because they're not physically performing at the rate that we expect them to, you're gonna create depression and movement. So it's it's more about keeping them to understand that there's never a bad reason to move your body. There's never a, a bad reason to uh, get your body moving in a controlled and rhythmic way. Whether that be running, hiking, whatever your, your pleasure is. It doesn't have to be in the gym, but it's our job to influence those people because then ultimately they're gonna be the people that go out and influence Medicare costs and influence uh, social security benefits and all these things that happen. So again, you, you can affect your small groups, uh, but ultimately we want to enhance that understanding. Um, I'd say that's probably the deeply rooted belief I have overall as a, as a human being and what my role is in this thing.